Are you there, Jesus? It's me, Colleen, of Colleen's Mongarex. Who am I kidding? Of course you know who I am. If Jesus was on Earth today, I know he'd be a hojo. I come before you today, humbled, and humiliated, to ask you just one little thing. Don't let me mention Chihaya Furu in today's video. I know, I know, it's kind of like my whole thing at this point. But there's other Jose manga that need to be recommended too. I just don't know if I have the strength to do it alone. <sighs> okay. Oh, and if you haven't subscribed already, you definitely should. I make pretty good content on shoujo and jose anime and manga. At least I like to think I do. All right, well, that's all. I mean, amen. Hello, my hojos, and welcome back to another video where I Colleen's Rex manga. I manga Rex Colleen's. I Colleen's manga Rex, you hojos. The theme for the recommendations today is one that was highly requested from many of you. We are going to be talking all about some must read Jose manga. The demographic of manga that some people and publishers may not even know exist. Legitimately, I could find a million posts mentioning seinen, shonen, shoujo, and then the list ends right there. For those that are unaware, Jose is manga that is geared towards women, usually over 30 or 40, that is published in magazines for that audience. I made a whole video about what Jose manga is and why it can be a little bit hard to categorize sometimes in this video, so if you want more information, go ahead and check it out. This video is just to give you guys some good recommendations on this kind of manga though. However, I will hold myself back from saying the manga that shall not be named today, as other Jose need to get the spotlight sometimes. Today, unlike any other day, I will be a person first and a poetry card game fan second. As always, the recommendations I'm going to be giving today will only be officially available in English. Some may be physical, some may only be available digitally, and some may be both. I do this as always to help newbies to Shoujo and Jose have easily accessible titles to start off with. So yes, maybe your favorite non-licensed Jose won't be on this list. It isn't because I hate it, and in fact, I probably like that series just as much as you do. But if you can't find it in an English bookstore or online, then it won't make the cut. Two more things before we continue. If you guys hear the fan, you know the drill. Just ignore it. It's hot today. The second thing is, I am just getting over the flu. So if I am very low energy, it's not because of any other reason you might think. I was just sick. With the usual introduction and disclaimers out of the way, let's go ahead and get into some Jose manga that you guys can't miss. Starting off with a fresh 2023 release, we have Don't Call It Mystery by Yumi Tamura. One of my most anticipated manga to come out this year, and the first manga from Tamura to have come out in English since Basara Wrapped in 2008. This crime mystery series is currently ongoing over in Japan, with the first two-in-one omnibus version coming out in America so far. This manga is actually a best-selling series over in Japan, partially thanks to the well-loved drama adaptation, which is about to get a movie. This is a mostly episodic manga that follows a boy named Totono who is pretty introverted. He loves the time he spends to himself, visiting art museums, attending classes, or making curry. However, despite his desire to enjoy his solitude, he often finds himself involved in criminal activities. First, he gets accused of the murder of one of his classmates, and then he gets caught up in a bus jacking. Totono just can't catch a break. Thanks to his acute awareness awareness of those around him, though, he's able to talk himself out of most situations. He's got a knack for figuring out the culprits through conversations, and because of this, even the cops come to him for help. In addition to this, he's also approached by some other unsavory characters, too. Don't Call It Mystery is one of the most thought-provoking and constantly entertaining manga to come out this year. Like with most mystery manga, the journey to figuring out who the culprit is is more important than actually knowing who did it. With Tamora's writing, 
though, she introduces you to the involved characters one by one, letting Totono have thorough conversations with each that gives us an insight into their psyche and their struggles. Through the back and forth rapport, we also get a bit of societal commentary from Tamora by the way of Totono. It doesn't feel forced or shoehorned, though. You get the sense right away that Totono has had a troubled past with his father, so of course he would have some thoughts about the nuclear family or sexism. His penchant for talking to others and giving advice adds to the natural way that personal commentary is given in this series. As for Totono himself, he is a lovable character as soon as you meet him. A little goofy, a little frumpy, but very intelligent. Unlike other modern Sherlockian characters, he's much more of a down-to-earth everyman. He doesn't possess supernatural amounts of intelligence or has a mind palace that he recedes into. Get out, I need to go to my mind palace. <laughs> He's just a little guy who's attuned to what other people tell him and what he hears. Then he uses this to be able to leave and go relax somewhere else where there's no trouble. If you haven't already, you need to read Don't Call It Mystery. It's an incredible manga that only gets better as it goes. Even if you may not be much of a mystery fan, this manga will suck you in immediately with how amazing the writing and the characters are. This series has the one omnibus out now, so that's two volumes in total, and there's 12 out in Japan right now. We don't know how long it's going to end up being, but I promise you it is definitely worth the purchase. Next up on the list is Helter Skelter by Kyoko Okazaki. Okazaki is a pretty legendary mangaka who has spent most of her career making Jose series that focus on underground counterculture, and Helter Skelter is no exception. It's a one volume psychological drama series that dives a bit into horror as the chapters progress. I think with that, you know there are some trigger warnings to follow, so look those up before you go ahead and read this one. The series follows a model named Liliko who is currently blowing up on the scene. She's not only doing modeling gigs now, but she's getting acting roles in movies and guesting on TV shows. Liliko's life seems picture perfect, although like with most famous celebrities, there's more to her that is hiding underneath. She's undergone so many plastic surgeries that hardly anything on her hasn't been changed. Not to mention she's on every drug imaginable because of this, which leads to constant mood swings. Liliko grows increasingly paranoid as life continues and she started to find bruises on her body like she's decaying. She's worried about losing everything, eventually fading into obscurity and no longer having her youth and beauty in her old age. As her paranoia increases, Liliko meets the new up-and-coming model Yoshikawa, who started off with everything she didn't have. This paranoia leads to intense jealousy, which she decides to act upon. When I was reading this manga for the first time, I really thought that Helter Skelter is everything that the idol wished it was. Although this series is a dark look into the world of modeling that doesn't entirely scorn the people who are in it. Liliko is not a good person, but she's not entirely unsympathetic either. She's simply a cog in the celebrity machine. Many people, especially women, can relate to how she feels, even if they themselves aren't rich actors or models. The art of Okazaki may be a turnoff to some, but it's her art that lends to that grungy feeling in all of her series. It's a bit messy and untamed, which is exactly what reading Helter Skelter is like. The characters are frantic, trying to make anything in their lives work out. There's body horror later in the story that the sketchy line work helps emphasize the grotesqueness. It's a really gripping story from beginning to end. You're never quite sure what will happen to Liliko or the lengths that she'll go to keep the relevancy that she's obtained. With Helter Skelter being only one volume long, it's a semi-quick but heavy read. One of the fun things, though, is that it actually connects a character to another series of Okazaki's that just released in English called River's Edge. So if you ended up enjoying Helter Skelter and you want to check out more of Okazaki's works, you can go ahead and get River's Edge right afterwards. I highly recommend reading this series and really Okazaki is just a powerhouse in Jose manga. So if you want to get into Jose, you really need to read a Kyoko Okazaki story at some point. In Jose manga, we love our drama and interpersonal relationships being explained 
explored, so here's another one of those. It's a GL manga called Even Though We're Adults by Takako Shimura, a very pretty romance series that is currently ongoing with six volumes out in English right now. It was actually just announced that the series will end on volume 10 over in Japan, so we know how much our commitment to this series is going to be if 10 volumes is too much or just right for you. The story is about an elementary school teacher named Ayano who seems a bit burnt out. One day after work, she heads to a bar and has a chance encounter with a woman named Akari. The two hit it off right away, spending the night together and ultimately kissing before parting ways. While Akari is pretty open about her sexuality, she was surprised by the fact that Ayano was also into girls. However, problems arise when Akari finds out that Ayano actually has a husband. This marriage was a loveless one for her though. Ayano feels that she may have found happiness with Akari, but her husband pushes back whenever she tells him that she kissed her and she wants a divorce. Now Ayano must deal with family problems, work life, and on top of that, figuring out her own feelings towards Akari. There is a ton of drama in this series. I could call this series a romance, but really the forefront is all the dynamics between every character involved. The growing relationship between Akari and Ayano is just as interesting as the crumbling partnership between Ayano and her husband. Those relationships are also just as interesting as the kinship shared between Ayano and her husband's sister, or the strangeness of the interactions that Akari and the husband have. Every character immerses you in the drama because while they're all flawed, they're all pretty relatable too. They don't act like they're characters in a drama series, they act like how real people would in these situations. While all these relationships are explored, the main focal point is Akari and Ayano as people though. How they go through their lives, making mistakes, and trying to move forward after those happen. Ayano is still struggling to be who she is without hiding her sexuality under the guise of what's normal. She slowly realizes that she can be more bold and forward when she's around Akari, which is contrasted to her shy demeanor around her husband and her husband's family. On the other hand, Akari has been out for a while, but she has a tendency to fall in love fast, trying her best to stay reasonable, but often ends up acting on impulse. Their relationship is messy for a multitude of reasons, but despite this, they can't stay away from each other. If you love yourself some adult romance, but also want that sweet, sweet drama, then even though we're adults is for you. It is a very down to earth series that makes you feel like you could be friends with any of the characters. I can't recommend this one enough as I feel like it's pretty underrated. Also, we just need to be reading and supporting more GL Jose. And that's not just because there's one specific GL Jose that I'd really like to read eventually. Do you hate your life? Everything about your job and your future bleak and miserable? Me too. Good thing we have Udamichi Onisan to commiserate with us. Although I fear he is the Goku of depression power scaling and I could never even imagine to beat him. Life Lessons with Udamichi Onisan is an ongoing dark comedy series that is perfect for any working adult that needs something to punch them in the gut and say, hey, isn't being old so fun? The story is about Uramichi Omota, who is your average 30 year old guy. He wakes up every day and puts his pants on one leg at a time. However, for him, he curses his existence the moment his eyes open. You see, Uramichi actually works at a children's TV show as the physical fitness teacher. He used to be a world-class gymnast, but now he is working a demanding and exhausting job. He no longer knows the meaning of his life and wants to be miserable alone. Udamichi doesn't work alone though. His other colleagues are the host of the shows, Ikiteru and Utano. Ikiteru is a bright guy who has not a single thought going on in his brain, while Utano is a jaded woman who can't get her boyfriend to propose to her. In addition to those two, Udamichi also works with his two former college roommates, Usahara and Kumatani, who both play a costumed bunny and bear on the show. Usahara is a little shit that constantly messes with Udamichi despite knowing that he will hunt him for sport, while Kumatani knows what's good for him. This manga is truly laugh out loud funny, and especially if you're over the age of 25. It's the kind of relatable humor that can get old after a while, but somehow never does in this series. Every line is perfectly delivered through illustration 
orchestration, paneling, and timing, which makes it pretty much a perfect comedy series. Rudamichi giving the most depressing monologue about adulthood to a group of children is hilarious every time and just makes you wonder how this show ever gets through filming. You know, maybe his job sucks so much because Udamichi can't stay on script. <laughs> Even with it being a dark comedy, the series can still be very uplifting and inspiring at times. Udamichi may not be the happiest person alive, but he still has a heart. In some other world where this TV show wasn't run by a soul-crushing corporation, maybe he would actually enjoy his time with the kids. He does genuinely get joy when they tell him that they had fun on the show that day. Sometimes, very rarely, he can enjoy a night with Usahara and Kumitani as well. These moments are like a little ray of sun peeking through the dark, heavy rain clouds that hang over his head. I recommend not only the manga, but the anime for this series as well. It's on Crunchyroll and is a pretty perfect adaptation of the source material. Plus, because the series is set in a children's TV show, there's obviously a lot of singing, but you can't actually hear the songs in the manga, so you get to hear them in the anime where they are extremely bizarre. It has 12 episodes in total and a dub if you prefer that as well. Life Lessons with Udomichi Onisan currently has four volumes out of the manga right now, and they are in two-in-one omnibuses, so that's eight volumes out in total. This is a really fantastic comedy series with just the right amount of heart, relatability, and Udomichi whoring himself out on TV for you to fall in love with. Before we get to the next manga recommendation, we need to hear from today's sponsor. So you guys are gonna sit there waiting with bated breath just to figure out what I'll be recommending next. Looking for English language manga in the EU? Then you've found your destination at Walt's Comic Shop. They have thousands of manga currently in stock with an inventory that's growing daily. Waltz offers low shipping prices for any EU country with bulletproof packaging and speedy customer support. You can enter the code Colleen's Mongarex at checkout for free shipping on your first order of 40 euros. Get all the Jose manga you need at waltzcomicshop.com, your number one source for English language manga in Europe. Now let's see what that next recommendation will be. Depending on if you didn't skip that sponsor ad or not, I think this next manga recommendation was well worth the wait. We have Apple Children of Eon by Ai Tanaka, a fantastic three volume supernatural romance series that I could not put down once I started reading it. I've actually mentioned this series a bit on the channel before because Ai Tanaka actually has another series coming out in English soon called King in Limbo. I'm very excited to check that one out because Apple Children of Eon was phenomenal. We follow a man named Yuki Nojo who was abandoned on the doorstep of a temple when he was a baby. The couple who lived there ended up taking him in and raising him as their own, but Yuki Nojo still doesn't feel like he belongs anywhere. As soon as he's old enough, he asks to be set up for marriage and is arranged to wed the daughter of an apple farmer named Asahi. He and Asahi moved to her family's orchard in the rural area of Japan immediately after the paperwork is signed. She teaches him as much as she can about working on the farm and helping out her family as she agreed to this marriage because her family needed more hands on deck. One day, Yuki Nojo comes across an isolated tree that he decides to harvest a few apples from. He ends up feeding these apples to Asahi, but as soon as he tells her family where he got them from, they all fall silent. And then they go into a panic, but no one tells him what is going on. All they'll say is that that apple was forbidden and he's no longer able to meet Asahi. There's so much intrigue to this manga since we as the audience are also an outsider along with Yukinojo. We slowly figure out the secrets of this village along with him, which is part of the reason why it's so hard to put this series down once you start it. There's clearly something happening in this small farming town that almost seems cult-like. You're never sure if this series is going to veer into horror, and at times the series is tense enough that it might actually take that route. In some ways, it almost does when it starts to introduce the supernatural elements across 
three volumes. Even while everything is crumbling around him though, Yuki Nojo has been able to find a place in this world. He's finally found somewhere that he can call home and something he can care about. Asahi has welcomed him into her family and teaches him everything about apple farming that he genuinely ends up enjoying. He even grows to love Asahi, even if the marriage was initially just a way for him to escape. He's now able to fight back against the unknown for someone. This manga is a really beautiful story that is able to accomplish so much in just a short amount of time. With only three volumes, it's a short read with not much commitment, so you might just sit down and read it in one sitting like I did. The series is only available digitally through Kodansha, there's no physicals, unfortunately, but we do have King in Limbo to look forward to from the same author as well, and those are coming out in physicals. The second to last Jose I want to recommend to you guys today is Something's Wrong With Us by Natsumi Ando. It's a mystery drama romance series that has 16 volumes out in English right now, and there's only one more volume left to complete the whole series. There is also a spin-off sequel series that came out in Japan, but I'm not sure if we're going to be getting that one in English yet. Something's Wrong With Us is the story of a girl named Nao whose mother worked as a Japanese confectioner when she was a child. They ended up living at the store she worked at called Kogetsuan, where she ends up meeting the owner's young boy named Subaki. The two got along well and now slowly began to love making confections herself. That is until one day she happened upon Subaki standing over his father's dead body and he accused Nao's mother of being the culprit. Years later, Nao is still traumatized by that day. Her mother ended up passing away during the trial and she still has no clue what happened on that fateful day. An opportunity arises though when a mysterious man hands Nao a letter that was from her mother, claiming that she didn't do it. With renewed motivation to find out the truth behind who murdered the head of Kogetsuan, Nao decides to face them head on as a confectioner of her own. Soon after, she meets Tsubaki once again, where he proposes that the two of them get married. And the thing is, he doesn't even remember who she is. This manga is insanely fun from start to finish as a sexy whodunit murder mystery. Trying to figure out who the culprit is through the entire story really just keeps you on your toes and engaged the whole time. You may think it's going one way and then it veers into another. To some, that may be annoying, but I promise you, nothing about this series is annoying as the drama is just impeccable. You will never get tired of the winding road that it takes you down. The other big draw to this manga is how much it teaches you about wagashi or Japanese confections. It actually takes a lot of interest in the process of making everything and the traditions that come with these centuries old sweets. Each confection has meaning to it in their names, their colors, or what it symbolizes. Going into the series you probably knew nothing about wagashi and then by the end you just want to take a bite out of one while peacefully sitting under a cherry blossom tree. Something's Wrong With Us is an extremely addicting manga, and if you get into it now, you don't even have to wait in between volumes for all the excitement that unfolds. There's some huge plot twists at the end of each volume that just makes you want to scream into your hands because you know you have to wait months until the next volume comes out. I highly recommend you guys pick up this series, and especially if you love murder mysteries or just an amazing romance series. The last manga on this list is one of my personal favorite Jose series and is unfortunately digital only through Manga Plaza called A Queen and an Old Maid by Ayumi Nagata. This romance drama series made me cry on the first chapter, so you know that you're in for a treat. Either that, or I just cry a lot. Since the manga is only available digitally, I can't really say how many volumes are available, but I can say there are 36 chapters available right now on Manga Plaza. A Queen and an Old Maid is about a woman named Fujiko who is extremely self-deprecating. She feels that she's too tall and awkward and unattractive to ever be found pretty by anyone else. In her own words, 
She's a femme cell. Constantly jealous of her cute best friend, Fujiko can't help but put herself down in front of others. This all comes to a head when she goes to a mixer with her best friend, only to make self-deprecating jokes out loud to the men who are attending. Just when she feels all may be lost, one of the men there, Koyanagi, actually asks her to go get a drink with him. Koyanagi isn't what he initially seems to Fujiko, though. He's actually very feminine in his interests and identifies as bi. Sick of her constant put-downs at the mixer that they were at, Koyanagi actually pulled her aside to tell her that she needs to have more confidence in herself because what's really making her ugly is her jealousy. He decides that he'll help Fujiko be more confident inside and out so she can finally hold her head up high when she's doing exactly what she wants. This series is so heartfelt and emotional. You immediately feel so deeply for Fujiko's struggle with her own identity and where she exactly fits in a society that it demands nothing but perfection from women. She doesn't know where she belongs and Koyanagi offers an escape from that. She can dress for herself and not have to live up to these insane expectations from others, and especially herself. He helps show her that it doesn't matter who you are or what you identify as, there's nothing wrong with you for those things. It's a beautiful story of acceptance and finding love along the way. The romance between Fujiko and Koyanagi unravels slowly as they come to understand each other. Koyanagi may seem like he's brimming with confidence, but he has his own struggles as a feminine bi man who isn't entirely out in society. No matter how hard he may fake it till he makes it, there's still others out there that are hateful and bigoted. However, Fujiko gives him a place to be authentically himself and even loved and admired for it. I just love this manga a lot, okay? <laughs> it makes me feel so many things when reading it and I can relate a lot to both Koyanagi and Fujiko's struggles. Society puts a lot of pressure on people to act a certain way because of the gender that they were assigned and both Fujiko and Koyanagi want to break out of this together. A Queen and an Old Maid is still currently ongoing in Japan, and I believe there's eight volumes out over there. Maybe nine, I'm not entirely sure. It actually was announced that it is getting a TV drama adaptation though, and I hope it turns out good. While I usually just want an anime for everything, because obviously I love anime, I think this series would do really good as a drama as well, so I'm rooting for it. And those are some Jose manga that you must read. I don't care if you have to sequester yourself away in a dark room to get it done. If that is what you must do, you must do it. These manga are all worth the time spent reading them and the money spent buying them. Plus, we all want more Jose manga in English, right? So you have to support the ones that are out. That's a wrap for today's video. As always, thank you my hojos for watching. Welcome to any new hojos. Read Shihaya Furu. Oh shit, I said it. Oh well, it's my ending speech. You guys would understand. Anyway, read Shihaya Furu, and I'll see you guys in the next video.